On this channel, we've talked a lot about Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and the 2024 WNBA draft as a whole. But today, I want to look towards the future and talk about, in specific, Angel Reese's game, her offensive rebounding, the narratives around that, the finishing, and where I see her game going in Chicago. A good starting point for today's video is to show this chart here, and there have been 10 players since 2011 to average over or at least 8 rim attempts per game in the W. Among these 10 players, you see Aneka Gumake with the highest mark of them all. 2016 Neka, the most efficient WNBA season ever, 73.3% at the rim. She was an MVP in 2016 as well. 2018 Sylvia Fowles is also here at 70% at the rim. Also, Alyssa Thomas, one of the lower marks here, 59.5%. And then also, the other player from 2024 besides Angel is Dierka Hamby of the LA Sparks at 59.9%. Like you see, Angel Reese is a player with a 40.2% at the rim. It's a historically bad finishing season. It's just a fact. But the more interesting part about this is looking at it, like looking at it from a projection standpoint where... If she's at eight rim attempts right now as a rookie, does that go up as her career goes down, goes on? Or if that mark stays around the same level and it doesn't get better, does her rim volume go down? That's the interesting part in my main question for this video. And just let me know what you think in the comments below where you see Angel's game going. But moving to some more stats, here's a comparison between Angel and other past rookie bigs in, ter in terms of their half-court rim field goal percentage. As you can see, Angel is at 33%. Her teammate Camila Cardoso was at 52% this season as well. Aaliyah Boston was at 63% last season. Shakira Austin, 64%. Tierra McCowan, 58%. Asia Wilson, 45%. John Quill Jones, 61%. And then Shanae Agumake at 54%. A comparison you see a lot for Angel is Asia Wilson because Asia wasn't a great finisher as a rookie. And Angel's also not a great finisher as a rookie, so why can't Angel become the next Asia Wilson? Well, it's not impossible for her to be a superstar player. I'm not saying Angel can't get to that level, but an important thing to consider is outlier development and actually projecting things that have happened or have seen flashes of happening, if that makes sense. To expand on that a little bit more, in college, for a comparison between Angel's college career and Asia Wilson, in college at LSU, Angel shot 49% at the rim, not a great mark for a college player. For Asia overall, 63%. So with the, the difference between both being a bad finisher, the difference is Asia, we've seen her be a good finisher prior to the W. It was more so just adjusting to the speed of the game, the physicality. For Angel, she's had the same problems dating back to college. And I think it's a process issue because it's the same issues and they're just more magnified now that she's playing against the best players. That said, one thing I was curious about was going back through a lot of the film to see the difference between how Angel finishes against single coverage one-on-one -on -one versus how she finishes with single coverage and then a help defender coming over either from the weak side or digging down in the post. And here's what I found. So in the 20 games or the last 20 games, as of the recording of this video on August 30th, this is hand track data by myself. So if it's a little bit off, that's on me. This is her post up field goal percentage against single coverage. And then, like I said, against single coverage plus a help defender. Against single coverage, she is much better at 51%, 19 of 37, four fouls drawn. Against single coverage plus a help defender, she is at 40%, 8 of 20, four shooting fouls drawn. One thing I didn't mention was this doesn't include offensive rebound, second chance opportunities, just because that would have been another thing we'll talk about in a second. But just with this, I would just say she really struggles to navigate traffic, and it's not even about physicality for me. I think it's her release point more than anything. She doesn't get off the ground very high. Her The ball is really super low, close to her body. Also, she doesn't have many counters, I would say, either. So whenever a second defender comes over, it's very easy to stop her. She's very predictable in the post. She's easy to block. And with all those reasons, it's tough for me to project her being some elite finisher. And going back to that chart we showed earlier, you give high-volume post touches, a ton of rim attempts, 
in the post to superstars and elite post scores. Let's say Angel over the next couple seasons goes from a 40% finisher to let's say 45, 50%, even 52%. Even if she jumps 10%, that's still not even a mark where I think you give her 9 plus. Or honestly, I would, if it was me, I would cut down her post rim attempts per game in the post by probably 50%. If she's not at a league average level or slightly below league average. So for me, it's a very interesting way for me to look at this this Chicago rebuild in general. Because with Chicago having their two building blocks, or two of their building blocks alongside Kennedy Carter, Angel Reese and Cardoso are both bigs. So what direction do they go in long term? Because right now, you're not competing for a championship. It's okay to give Angel a bunch of post touches, give Cardoso a bunch of post touches. That's fine with me. But long term, let's say Cardoso solidifies herself as the face of this front court. I had a higher grade when Cardoso was a prospect by multiple tiers. I have it in writing as well. I just think that Cardoso was the better prospect compared to Angel Reese. And still now, I would take Cardoso over Reese long term. Not saying Reese isn't going to play a long WBA career and be very valuable. But if I think Cardoso is a better passer, she's a better finisher, she is... A better screener, in my opinion. It's probably a little bit closer there. A more valuable defender. With all of those things in in the cards, Reese needs to be able to complement Cardoso and be the secondary big. And that's not me saying she has to be on the bench. She can't play with Cardoso. But it needs to be much more like Rebecca Brunson or Dennis Rodman than it is her being Asia Wilson, Lisa Leslie, or Neko Gumake, if that makes sense. If I'm Chicago, I understand them giving Angel these reps. Just give her the opportunities. Let her try things. Let her experiment her game because I understand giving young players the freedom to make mistakes and work through those mistakes is what you want because that's the only way they're going to improve. I understand that. But long term, if that doesn't happen, can she scale her game down to fit that more smaller role? Can she just be an offensive rebound hub, can defend, can work hard on that end, can she be more of a driver of offense like as a perimeter player? Not saying she's going to be some forward or a point forward, but like, can she create more on drives, which is something she did at LSU in spurts? All of those things, I think, would allow her to be more of a connector compared to being this superstar. And that's the versatility that she has long-term, I think. It's just about, can she scale her game down? Like with Rebecca Brunson, for example, Brunson had a career 18.2% usage, we saw Brunson go from more of a higher usage player in in Sacramento to more of this glue forward, glue big with the Minnesota Lynx, won a ton of championships. She reduced her role, and like you can see here, 1.8 post, post-ups per game in 2011, down to 1.3 in 2012, and that kept going down lower in 2013, lower in 2014, and then lower in 2015. She played next to Sylvia Fowl, some other bigs that were also non-shooters. And what she did was she got a ton of offensive rebounds. She did not hold the ball long. She did not was in a ball stopper whatsoever. She made quick reads, and she really worked on defense. She was the perfect role player, the perfect glue player for a championship team or a dynasty, really a dynasty in Minnesota. That's in the cards for Angel Reese. I think... For her to contribute to winning at the highest level, I much more view her in this type of role. Not saying she's going to be Brunson, but like more in this glue forward because of her motor. Her One of the best motors I've ever seen from a basketball player or any sport whatsoever. Her motor is unmatched, and I think you go into that skill more long term if she can't figure out the finishing. Because I think the worst thing you can do for Angel is just have her playing in the same role she's playing in now and struggling as a finisher for like five years and just not changing things up at all and just having her in the same role because I just don't think it's going to be contributing to winning. She can make winning plays, but I think overall just that role for her isn't the best long term. The other comp you see with Reese is Dennis Rodman. With Rodman, he started his career in Detroit, was much more of a high usage player in his first few seasons was an all-star average, like 15-plus points per game. There are similarities between the two in terms of being elite rebounders. The motor is unreal with those two players. Dennis's ability to adapt to his role is similar to Brunson as well. 
with Rodman, his role got smaller in Sac in not Sacramento, but San Antonio. And then it got smaller again with the Bulls alongside MJ, Scotty, etc. etc. So my overarching takeaway is for people to temper the expectations. I love Angel Reese as a basketball player more than almost anybody else. Just because just her motor, there's just a very fun aspect with how she views the game, with how hard she works, and that's just an admirable aspect of her game, just how hard she works in general on both ends of the floor, and what she means for women's basketball in general. Like I'm not saying what she means for women's basketball isn't immense because she is one of the biggest faces of the sport, and I just think there's a good chance that she's just not a superstar caliber player, at least in terms of like her own court abilities. That doesn't mean she can't contribute to winning. If you look at her skills, the good thing about her is she has the motor, she has the rebounding, she has the defense, the team defense, to be an elite connector at the four position or at the five position on the bench. And that gives her such a high floor, but also the ceiling is still there if she figures out the finishing and just grows as an offensive player in general because there's just many avenues there. And I think you look at this with different players around the league, there's many players that are just on-ball players and they don't have many secondary skills. She has all of the ancillary skills. It's just about if she can't find the offensive game, the on-ball stuff, can she just reduce her game down and accept that role? I think she can. I would ex I would expect that. So now that you know what I think, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about Angel Reese's game long-term? Do you view her as more of a superstar caliber on ball engine at the four four or five position or closer to being a Dennis Rodman, Rebecca Brunson type glue forward big for their teams. Let me know what you think. Anyways, subscribe for more WNBA content and I'll see y'all next time.